Hi there, Scott Rockfile, back with another podcast review. Going to talk about this new director's edition for Star Trek, the motion picture. I have to give you a little background, but short version is this new 4K edition. If you don't need the old theatrical edition, the TV edition, all the other editions, I guess, there's a $99 box set out there. Um, for about 20 to 24 bucks, you can get the 4K edition of the director's edition. You get that, plus all the old extras and about mm, an hour or more of new extras. It's a good package, and the movie's never looked or sounded better. It's Dolby Atmos. is fully restored. They've added some scenes they couldn't finish. The short version is, you need to own this. This is the best version of the movie. Get the $100 box set or get the $20 you know, regular version if you need. It's different than what came out in the 4K box set, if you need to know that. It's... To me, it's a much better version of the movie after watching it last night, and I'll tell you more about it. I will stay away from most spoilers, but this movie came out in 1979. You probably saw it and were disappointed in it, or it's not one of your favorites. This has moved up the list pretty far after this definitive version for me. So I've wanted it for a while. I was thinking about picking up the expensive edition, but when you just apples to orange, you know, apples to apples kind of comparison... I didn't need the TV version because it came in like barely high definition and and rough shape. And I didn't need the original version because I have the original Blu-ray set um, that came out with all the movies, all the original Kirk cast movies. And then there's a second box set for all the next gen movies. I have both those on Blu-ray and that's sufficed me for the last, I don't know, 10, 15, however long years I've had them. When I pull, when I need to watch one of the movies, they're there. Now I am interested in hearing, um, watching this new, there's a new version of Star Trek. Two more of a director's cut. Interested in that because that's always been my favorite of the old school Star Trek movies. This one was a big one to go a little bit of history, not to bore you, but I, I read up on it. This was big because growing up, this was all the sci-fi we had, except for some more adult things or some more weird things, until we got Star Wars in 77. The reruns of Star Trek were on weekends at first, and eventually they were on almost every night of the week. Um... It was one of my dad's favorite shows, and I watched it. He liked the almost gunfighter-type version of Captain Kirk, you know, <laughs> shoot first and ask questions later. He watched a lot of those gunfighter shows, Bonanza and um, of the Wild Wild West and things like that. And Anyway, he liked tough guy TV shows, and we watched a lot of Star Trek. It was a good show, and I, I grew up on Star Trek. So when they were making a movie, it was a big deal. There was a lot of hype. This was two years after Star Wars, so we had learned how to hype things for a big release. And we found out later that they rushed the movie out. They weren't done with it. This was a big movie for Paramount. They put a lot of money. Nobody had spent that kind of money on this kind of property. The dream of making a TV show into a, a big-budget movie We just thought it was never going to happen. And then it did happen. And when it came out, I went with my family and we took friends from the neighborhood who were Star Trek fans. And a couple people fell asleep during the movie. So if that tells you. Um, But for me, I had read up on, you know, behind the scenes for the whole time, knew the storyline. I read the novel adaptation. The book was, uh, the story was written by Alan Dean Foster, who handled the novelization of it. Great science fiction writer at the time who went on to write Splinter of the Mind's Eye, one of the best Star Wars books. Science consulted on the movie was Isaac Asimov. So there was a, you know, it still had that Star Trek techno babble slant to it. Robert Wise knew what he was doing. If you don't know who Robert Wise is, he was the director of the classic The Day the Earth Stood Still, one of my favorite science fiction movies of all time. It was remade with Keanu Reeves not very well. Um, not that it wasn't made well, it just didn't have the soul that that original movie does. Anyway, Robert Wise is a great director. He, he, has directed a lot of things. He knows just about everything in front of and behind the camera. He's an actor's director. He's a director's director. He's just that kind of guy. And he, for the longest time, said they never got to finish this movie. Paramount had to rush it to make this December release date that they had to hit it. It just the, All the marketing, all the toys, everything else was coming out at that time. So they've never definitively finished the movie. In 2001, they went back to it and fixed some things. And then finally for this, in 2022, they went back in and they inserted some scenes that were left out because they were unfinished. One of them is probably the most important scene in the film where Spock basically runs down what's really going on here. And he kind of sheds a tear over the, the, the thought of this machine being a child. And anyway, it's, a, it's an incredible scene. Very short. But they just couldn't finish it. They didn't have time. 
what they did with the special effects is incredible. Um, there were times, because I've seen that, I saw this movie in the theater as a kid multiple times. I've seen it on all the versions of home video, VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and now 4K. Um, I'm very familiar with this film, very familiar with its pacing. It was pretty slow to me always. It's never been one of my favorite Star Trek movies. Ah, watching it this time, they've tightened it up. That scene at the beginning where they fly around the Enterprise takes still takes a long time, but it doesn't take as long as it did. It, it's tightened up quite a bit. And now it makes sense because you have this really long scene when they encounter the alien vessel and they fly over it and it takes forever. Well, they were letting you know that in our little shuttlecraft, it takes that long to fly over the Enterprise. And then it takes the Enterprise that long to fly over the alien ship. There was more of a sense of scale. They had filled out some of the special effects on things. Um, the restoration, if they had to do something digitally, they made it look like it was done back then. Not that it looks bad in any way, shape, or form. It just looks like it's part of the movie. You're not screaming that, oh, my God, they inserted something that doesn't look anything different. Um, it's the middle ground between what they did with the original series on Blu-ray. On the, when they put out the original series on Blu-ray, you switch back and forth from the original special effects to brand new special effects. They made the planets all look different and better. They made some of the cities and stuff look better. Um, and you can switch back and forth on the fly or just watch it. I watch it with the new effects. It doesn't bother me. But for purists, it's a change. Well, this, these special effects look like, it just to continue, I, you can't, they were seamless. I watched one of the extras that showed what they did, and there was one scene that I remember going, that just looks much clearer, but it doesn't look any different than the rest of how I remember it or the rest of the movie. And then you see that it was all, that, that entire scene was recreated digitally, and I, my jaw hit the floor. There are a couple things, like when you first come upon the alien vessel inside the cloud, it's much more immense and menacing looking now. With the HDR the Dolby Vision HDR gives you greater black levels and better definition of dark things and things in the dark. You don't just get this wash of darkness anymore. A buddy of mine pointed out that the movies never looked good. It's always looked rough, even from an original print he saw in theaters. And me too. It was dark looking. It was whatever. It does not look that way now. The entire film has been cleaned up. It doesn't look like a, a 4K crispy movie from yesterday, but it looks much more modern, much better. Much. It, it just it, it flows. It, it doesn't look rough anymore. And so HDR gives us a lot, like I talked about the dark, the blacks and stuff. That does great. It also does amazing with the specular highlights when V'ger, the, the mind, uh, sends probes onto the ship and they're made out of light. It just looks, it's bright. It lit up my room, the, the specular highlights as they call them. Things like headlights, neon lights, um, fires, explosions. Those create highlights that if your TV can reproduce it brightly, it, it's it's. Wow, it looks, you know, it's eye-popping. So anyway, there was some of that in this movie, especially that stuff with Decker and 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 what happens, you know, at the end of the movie. It, it I had to film it on my camera, uh, on my uh, camera phone, it, on my iPhone, because it just looked, wow, look how bright that is. It looks amazing. The added scenes, you really, like I said, didn't notice it. I noticed the pacing was much faster. The movie is still two hours and 16 minutes with credits, but like the first three or four minutes is an orchestral intro that I don't remember ever being on there. Um, old movies used to do that. They'd have the orchestra play or the soundtrack play for two to four minutes, five minutes sometimes before. Then things would go dark. That's while people are sitting down, and it kind of puts you in the mood. Well, this was all to stars. And they play just the overture from the from the film, and it's incredible. Jerry Goldsmith's score is amazing for this film. And that's when you realize that the, the, the new Dolby Atmos soundtrack really gives depth to the, to the soundtrack. The soundstage is wider. It feels more spacious. All of it does. There were a few times in the movie where some of the, the recorded dialogue didn't sound as good as some of the other dialogue that was probably added later. Um, it was filmed on the set, and you could tell it was kind of cleaned up and had a bit of a older sound. But for the most part, this Dolby Atmos new soundtrack is just, if you have the capabilities of doing it, I don't know how directional, how, how much overhead stuff. I've got the two front overhead channels in my Dolby Atmos setup, but it did sound bigger. Just the whole sound stage of everything when you were outside or when you were um, in a, an enclosed room, there was a big difference in the sound stage of what you were listening to in my living room. That was that was impressive. It's best the movie's ever sounded and best it's ever looked. So 
if you're listening to this for a 4K review, I give it my highest marks. It's a four and a half out of five, if not a five out of five. It comes with just the movie on 4K, and there's three different commentaries, and it comes with a Blu-ray with the extras. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of new extras, and then there's a whole bunch of legacy extras. I'm not sure if it has every single extra from the box set or every single extra from the previous special editions. I couldn't tell you. Um, But it was more than enough stuff to go through. And some of the new stuff, some of the guys that worked on the new film, and they talk about the restoration process and everything, that was pretty interesting stuff that I watched after the film. So. This moves way up on the list. I'm now going to have to re-watch the other Star Trek movies to re-give my list of movies. Two has always been a favorite. For a long time, four was a favorite, but it gets cheesier and cheesier the older I get. Um, some of the comedy inserted into the ones later just don't doesn't hold up. This this was a very earnest. There wasn't a whole lot of... Con- this feels like Star Trek. This more what probably they were going for when the movie was originally released. It is one of the best, like, here's a director's cut that doesn't radically change the movie, but makes the movie better. Yeah. Pace is better. Everything makes more sense. There's a few lines of dialogue that just kind of brings everything together. If this has always been kind of an obscure movie to you, I've read so much about it and read the original story. So I, you know, and I know what's going on, but if you've watched this movie and sometimes, well, that was a little dense about what was going on there. Uh, it's a lot more clear now. And like I said, the special effects. So if you have a 4k setup, if you can enjoy this disc, even if you don't have Atmos, I'm going to do another podcast about Atmos. I've seen a lot of negative, um, videos from studio guys, Uh, complaining that they're being forced to use Atmos. And I have a particular opinion as somebody who's a fan of Atmos and movies and and fans of surround sound music. Um, I don't think every album needs to be in surround sound. I do think most movies do. It makes a difference. On older movies where they do the two-channel mono thing, it sounds fine, but it's so much more immersive to hear a, a movie from 1979 have a modern soundtrack that just puts you in that that room, that spacious cavity, or outdoors. It, it really, sound is a big part of a movie. There's many famous directors and sound guys who have said that. And when you hear the difference, if you switch back and forth between two-channel stereo and full 5.1 or 7.1 or even mine's, 5.1.2, um, yeah, you just get a much more spacious, more you're there kind of feel. All in all, it's a almost perfect package. I don't really need the other versions. I have them on Blu-ray, and I think in the other package you only get one other version in 4K. The other movies are on, or the other versions are on Blu-ray. Mm, I don't, you know, if you're a huge fan of the movie, then absolutely get the box set. It's it, It's got to be worth it. But For me, who just really wanted the best version of the movie, this is the definitive version of Star Trek The Motion Picture and will be the only version I watch going forward, watch with people, um, pull out from time to time. Uh, Not that I'm going to burn the old ones, but I don't have any reason to go back to a previous version of this film. This is from somebody who read the book, from somebody who saw it originally in theaters, who it's always been a disappointment to. It's not anymore. It's one of my favorite Star Trek movies now. That's a Wow. I didn't really thought I was going to come off that positive about it, but it was really that great and that transformative experience of a film experience for me. So anyway, Star Trek, the motion picture, the director's edition. Yeah, I'd pick it up, do it right now, whatever it costs. It's worth it. Scott Rockfile, thanks for listening. Taking time out of your day to listen to a podcast is kind of like people reading it's it's almost an archaic thing so thank you for the experience and, and enjoying it with me um a lot more on the way including that one about dolby atmos if you're into that kind of stuff all right thank you very much have a spectacular day 